On Straight Talk today, I'm pleased to welcome Mike Sawchuk, an expert with cleaning operations assessments. Mike, thank you for joining us. Jeff, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Cleaning operations assessments. What a topic and an important one we're going to get into today as we talk about how that will help empower a company or a facility to improve their operations. So, Mike, I guess the easy question is, why? Why assessments? Why are they so important? Great question. Jeff, it's regardless of what you're assessing. It could be the security of your people or other assets. It could be the equipment and the condition of that equipment or or your cleaning uh, operation in total. Assessments provide you with valuable information. And, And that information is valuable because it should tell you where, what, how, and why uh, in order to develop a plan for improving results, uh, lowering costs, lowering risk, including the risk of uh, you know negligence, as well as being best prepared for long-term success. And, and the last point is that assessments are a bit different from benchmarking as they provide greater, both deeper and wider, uh, more valuable, and, and it should be more relevant details. Well, I appreciate you mentioning the benchmarking. That was going to be one of my questions, but I I thought they were somewhat similar that the two were, but good information. Um, You know, like in all things, Mike, I imagine there's a good way and a bad way or a different way to approach it. What's a proper assessment look like? Oh, that's a great question. Um, Proper assessments uh, should be, uh, you know, for cleaning operation, at least, it should be very comprehensive and, and very integrated. And that's the, the the problem. A lot of people, when they do an assessment, they're just looking at product procedures, policies, and protocols. So those are important, and that's probably a found you know the foundation of a cleaning operation. But it's got to include more. Uh, it's got to include things like the people. You know, what do they hire for? Are they hiring for attitudes and DNA and traits, or are they hiring for skills? How do they onboard? How do they train? How do they develop? How do they retain those uh, people? And most importantly, the assessment should include a review of the leadership, uh, the leadership that's there. Did they create a culture, a work culture of, of high levels of engagement, empowerment, trust, respect, satisfaction, motivation? And uh, part of that leadership review should also include their attitudes, traits, DNA, as well as their skill set. Are they effective leader or are they really a manager given a leadership title? And the reason why that's important, and you've got others saying it in the industry too, um, Jeff, is that people and leadership are going to become more important in, in the future. They're important today, but they become more important in the future. And that's going to disrupt uh, some organizations or allow others to create opportunity and, and advantage for themselves. So thank you, Mike. Um, any other details on how this all happens, maybe how long it takes? It, it, it could be done, um, you know, from, from an outsider and, and, uh, I'm actually doing one, uh, on next week, Jeff, I'm going to, uh, to a, to a university and that's what they really asked me to do. Just come in there, walk around and, and do a high level assessment. Uh, so it, it won't take necessarily that long, a couple of days uh, in the field and then to write the report, or it could be done with someone themselves. They can actually learn. And, um, you know, a plug for myself is that I do offer that uh, uh, education course that they could actually learn the information, uh, see how it, uh, what the best in class operations do on over 140 different considerations of product procedures, policies, of people, of leadership. Then they're able to apply that knowledge by walking around themselves, their own site, looking under the hood and, and see, are they as good or better? Or are they just the um, average? Or they're not as good in those 140 considerations, or they're not even existent. And then from that information that they have, depending on their resources, their priorities, their situation, they'll have developed a site-specific or an operation-specific assessment on over 140 different comparisons and be able then to develop an improvement plan that'll be sustainable and will drive greater results in the levels of clean, safe, healthy, and more importantly, at the lowest overall cost. Okay. Well, you know, there are do-it-yourselfers out there that might want to take advantage of of that. Um, But I think I just hire you, Mike, to come in and do it if I had a facility. So, (laughs) Thank you. Um, 
So when this is all done, when the assessment's done either by you or if they do it themselves using your information, what's next? What What's that look like week, month, months from that assessment? Well, it's um, it all depends on how many have. Like, uh, you know, when you look at a lot of operations, especially the, um, uh, you know, I've, I've had some BSCs come through the course and a lot of them are, are first class already. So there's not a lot of, there's not like they got to do 130 of those 140 things. But you're finding typically uh, what I'm finding is that most organization, even if they think they're best in class, there's probably 20 to 30 things that they're not even doing. And those 20 or 30 things for Operation one could be totally different than operation two, but again, it has what I'm saying. It, it can't be a, a template to read this report and there's what you need to do. It's got to be site specific or operation specific. And then from there, so depending on how many areas of improvement, what they are, the cost to implement, et cetera, that could determine a timeline. But from once that's been done, I, I think what's more importantly is that it'll drive operational excellence. And if we think of it as a, as a house or a building, operational excellence is that foundation. And if you have a weak foundation, you know, what's going to happen to the house? If you try to build a high rise on a, on a single dwelling foundation, it's going to come collapsing down. So the beauty of it, uh, you know, assessments are different than benchmarking. Assessments will provide the what, how, where, why, uh, that you're able to drive the change to make this operational excellence. Once you have that foundation of operational excellence, the next steps are for, for, the, uh, for them to focus on getting more customers or more specifically getting more profitable customers and, and to continue that growth. The second key thing that they would have to focus on is, is the ability to get the right people, find them, hire them, develop them, keep them. And you need both. You need both. You could imagine if you're able, really good at getting sales, you know, you get all these customers that want your business, but if you're in today's world, if you can't find and keep good people, how are you going to support that sales? Conversely, if you're able to find and keep good people, but you're not able to grow your sales, then what, what good is all those that access to the people? So the um, uh, operational excellence as determined by a good assessment, comprehensive, integrated, and like I said, in 140 different considerations of, of the four Ps, the people, the leadership, That'll drive that. So you need all three, operational excellence, ability to grow sales, and then uh, the ability to, um, to uh, find and keep and develop good people. From there, if you're a BSC, uh, there's a time to start fine tuning. So now that you've got your business up and running and you're saying, I, I got operational excellence, I'll continuous improve upon that. I'm able to find uh, profitable customers. I'm able to find good people. What they should be then looking at, uh, thinking ahead is, when I decide to retire or I decide to just back out of the business, I want to be able to get the highest multiplier, the highest price for my business. So that's when they have to stop and change from working uh, in the business as you know their number one employee to working the business and start uh, planning, developing, and executing changes to allow them to have the highest multiplier when they decide to, to sell or retire or just back off a little bit. Well, good information. Um, you know, there's so many challenges cleaning operations have. This assessment idea sounds like a perfect solution to pinpoint and overcome those and to create a better system. Mm -hmm. So anything else we want to mention? Well, no, I just thank you uh, again for the opportunity. And and uh, right from the beginning, what you said is that most people think assessments and and benchmarking are the same, but they are quite different. And, and assessments are valuable. And, and I would just encourage uh, operation, let it be in-house or let it be a BSC, regardless if you're uh, medium size or extremely large, or even if you're starting, it, it is that operational excellence. And, and, and people just need to park their egos. You know, I've talked to so many people and they say, well, I've been in business for 30 years. Of course, I'm running a good company or I'm good in-house operations. But there's a lot of, um, and I don't mean to be as blunt, Jeff, but there is a lot of complacency, apathy, that they really Agreed. just don't know uh, how good their operation is. And and last, if if uh, they can, if they're looking for more information, I welcome them to uh, check out uh, our website, which is just sawchuckconsulting.com. The education tab, it'll review what, what should be in a good assessment, and it, it gives you uh, options for a uh, course. 
as well as the coaching that comes with that. And then lastly, it provides some testimonials from BSCs, K-12, to higher education, venues, hospitals, long-term care. So it is for, for everybody. Yeah. Well, you mentioned your website. I'll put the link down below in the video description. People can click there to learn more. But thank you, Mike, for your time today. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate the opportunity. Go safe.